What's going on everybody? It's Orock here and I'm back at you with yet another video for Ming Tech Media. And in today's video, we're gonna discuss the top 10 programming languages that you should be learning in 2022. Now you might be wondering, how did I come up with this list? And I'll tell you, I did a ton of research and use various sources to come up with this list. And I'll link all of them in the description below. But real quick, going through some of them, I use the popularity of programming languages, which is the PYPL index. And this index is updated monthly as well as the Giabi index. And they just basically comb search engines for uh, common searches for tutorials for languages or just search terms related to uh, programming languages. And like I said, it's updated every month. Both of these indexes are updated every month and they use the top 25 search engines. I use popular blogs like Hacker Noon, Better Programming, SitePoint, uh, Tech Republic, and Coding Nomad, as well as others. As well, I use job postings on Glassdoor, Indeed, and other popular job boards. I also use Google Trends to analyze just the common search terms that people might search when they're learning a new language and just my industry experience and just Reddit and a bunch of other sources to come up with this list. I also use the Stack Overflow developer, uh, the developer survey that they put out every year. I use the one from 2021 and 2020. Um, and yeah, that's it. So let's just get into the video. So coming in number 10 on the list is TypeScript. And before I talk about TypeScript, I wanna mention one thing about JavaScript and it really wasn't meant to create the large and complex systems that we see on the modern web today. So what is TypeScript? It's really just a superset of JavaScript that allows for optional typing and it compiles back to JavaScript. So it's just JavaScript with types really. Um, and it has a familiar structure to more C style languages like C, C++ and Java. And it can be used on both the front and the back end. Now, another thing to mention about JavaScript is that it's dynamic. So it allows you to do something like store strings or numbers or database in a single variable, right? And this might be cool and this might be fine and dandy, but it might cause some confusions with, which later cause some errors. For example, if a developer on your team creates a modified text function that expects to be passed a string and receives some sort of integer, um, then TypeScript will throw an error, whereas JavaScript will let the program run because that's perfectly legal in JavaScript. So the introduction of types in TypeScript strictly defines what a variable can and can't contain. And a study actually done by Microsoft researchers and by researchers at the University of College in London, and by the way, Microsoft actually develops and maintains TypeScript. But in the study, they found that TypeScript, when used in conjunction with JavaScript, eliminates 15% of the overall errors in a program. That significantly increases productivity. And 63% of JavaScript developers are already using TypeScript. So, you know, it's only growing in popularity. And get this, it was ranked third most loved language on Stack Overflow's 2021 developer survey. And it was second most wanted language on that same survey. And you can be as implicit or as explicit as you want. And if you don't explicitly write your types, there's type inference. So the compiler will use that to try and guess what type you're using. Also, in terms of job prospects and salaries, job prospects, almost any job board you find, whether it's Indeed, Stack Overflow Jobs, um, Glassdoor, whatever job board, there are people and companies looking for TypeScript developers and the average salary for a TypeScript developer is $123,000. So it's really good, it's robust, it has a good community and it's a great language to learn. So coming in at number nine is PHP. And PHP is a server-side scripting language that is used to develop static sites, dynamic sites, and web applications. It stands for Hypertext Preprocessor, but it earlier stood for personal home pages. PHP scripts can only be interpreted on servers that have PHP installed on it, but the client computers accessing PHP scripts only need a web browser. A PHP file contains PHP tags and a .php extension, and it was one of the first server-side languages that could be embedded into HTML. 
And people love PHP because it's free, it's open source, it's versatile, it's object oriented, it's secure, and it's easy to use and easy to learn. It has a large community and over 77% of the modern web is written out in PHP. It even powers CMSs like WordPress and even Facebook's original version was written out in PHP and still has a lot of parts that are written out in PHP. Now, although there isn't a ton of new development and new applications being built out in PHP, there's still a ton of legacy jobs for PHP. So you can carve yourself out as a niche developer by learning this language and offering those sort of services. If you go on Glassdoor right now, there's over 9,000 hits for PHP developer. The average PHP developer salary in the United States is just above 100,000. Coming in at number eight is R. Now, R is a programming language and software environment for statistical analysis, graphical representation, and reporting. R possesses an extensive catalog of statistical and graphical methods. It includes machine learning algorithms, linear regressions, time series, and statistical reference and inference, just to name a few. Most of the R libraries are written in R, but for heavy computational tasks, uh, developers prefer C, C++, and Fortran. And R is useful, and it's very, very, very ubiquitous, and you know, used in geospatial applications, and used by companies like Uber, Google, Airbnb, Facebook, and many others. Data analysis with R is done by a series of steps, including programming, transformation, discovering, modeling, and communicating the results. And there's a ton of jobs that exist for R, and usually they exist in the realms of data science, database administration, data analyst, um, data architecture, a geostatistician, or quantitative analysis. And the average developer salary for an R programmer is just north of $112,000 in the United States. So coming in at number seven, we have the Go programming language, which is an open source programming language created by engineers at Google to be lightweight, dependable, and compile quickly. It features a standard template library, static typing, package management, support and testing, and platform independence. One of its key features is that it's lightweight, and it's used for concurrent processes and thread-like behavior. It also has a dynamic looking syntax. Go has a numerous amount of benefits and a lot of them include things like uh, the no need for a virtual machine, the quick compilation, quick execution, the lightweight uh, Go routines that it has that support concurrencies, uh, interfaces that enable loosely coupled systems, memory safety, extensive built-in libraries, automatic garbage collection, and as well as independent error handling. It does, however, lack runtime safety and enforces strict rules. But nonetheless, it's being used by a lot of popular tech companies like Dropbox, Cloudflare, Netflix, SoundCloud, MongoDB, and Twitch, just to name a few. It has just under 4% market share, but it's growing year by year. And developers usually really turn to Go when they need a strong language for software development that's good for web programming, both on the front and the back end, that has command line scripting, and has network server, and is good for network server applications. And because of Go's fast startup time, low runtime overhead, and the ability to run without a virtual machine, it's become very, very popular in recent years for developing microservices. And the developer salary for Golang devs is just under $130,000 in the US. Okay, coming in at number six is the Swift programming language, which was developed by Apple. And Apple as a company has been growing massively in the past few years, and it just became the first company to pass a $3 trillion market cap. And they have a lot of devices, and they specialize in devices um, as part of their business model. They have the iPad, the iMac, the iPhone, Apple Watch, and all these um, um, devices, the applications are developed in Objective-C or Swift, right? Um, and Swift is just meant to be a replacement for Objective-C because Objective-C lacked a lot of modern language features. Um, Swift itself is easy to understand. It's very scalable. It's statically typed, which makes it very fast, although you don't really have to declare types because like a lot of modern languages, it has type inferences. And it's a great first language because of its simplicity. 
and there's a ton of jobs for iOS developers on job boards and niche job boards like Swift Jobs and Gun.io. But overall, Swift is a great language to learn and the average developer salary for people that know Swift or Swift developers is just under $140,000. Now coming in at the middle of the list, we have C and C++. Now C++ is a general purpose programming language that's object oriented, has generics, and provides a facility for low level memory manipulation. It gears more towards being used for systems programming like with embedded systems, operating systems, kernels, and etc. It's also used in games because you can get really close to the hardware and can easily manipulate resources. It provides multi-layer for networking and provides procedural programming over CPU intensive functions. Also, uh, in C++ are just used for GUI applications. A lot of them are written in C++. A lot of operating systems are written in C++. Even Bloomberg's uh, RDBMS, their relational database management system, their set of library and development environments are all written in C++. Um, compilers are also written in C++ and it's also used in enterprise softwares and libraries with complex mathematical computations. computations. Um, there's over 40,000 jobs right now on Glassdoor. If you type it in, you have the C++ listed as a skill. So it's very sought after. It's not going anywhere. There's a huge developer community. Um, you know, it's very tried and tested. It's been around for decades. And, you know, for, as far as robotics and, you know, low level other hardware, um, C and C++, those are the uh, uh, go-to choices for a lot of developers in that space. And the average salary for someone who has this skill, C++, is $119,000 here in the US. Now coming in at number four is C-sharp, which is a modern general purpose programming language that has a variety of uses. It's primarily used on the .NET framework and can be applied to open source platforms as well. C-sharp is object oriented and derives a lot of its characteristics from its predecessors, C and C++. And it was developed by Microsoft in 2000 to help meet the growing need and demand for more web applications. Its popular features include reusable components for quicker development, and the syntax looks pretty similar to other C style languages like Java, C, and C. Now, the data types in C Sharp are way more flexible and are less error prone. They're also used for um, just web application development. C Sharp is used for web application development on a .NET framework, and it's used for Windows application development and it integrates seamlessly and effortlessly with Unity for game development and for making AR and VR experiences. You definitely won't find a shortage of jobs for C Sharp and C Sharp's developers, especially with .NET. So it's worth learning and it's growing and it has a strong community and it's been around for more than two decades. So it's definitely worth learning. And the average developer salary for someone that knows C Sharp or C Sharp developer is sitting at $120,000 in the US. Coming in at number three is a crowd favorite and that's JavaScript is actually one of my favorite languages as well. It's a dynamically typed language and it's always up there as one of the top languages to learn every year because of its extreme versatility. It's very ubiquitous and it's very beginner friendly. And it's one of the technologies, one of the core technologies of the web and over 97% of websites um, use JavaScript on the client side, often in conjunction with some MVC framework like Angular or React. JavaScript is also used on the, the server side and powers a lot of frameworks like Node, Next.js, Express.js, Meteor, and Gatsby. And if I were to go back, I'd probably learn JavaScript as one of my first languages because of its versatility. I mean, you can even use it for game development with uh, frameworks and libraries like Fraser.js and even mobile development with React Native. And you can even use things like A-Frame, which is basically just used to create VR experiences. And we all know VR is blowing up, especially with devices like the Oculus. Um, and you can also use libraries like TensorFlow to use JavaScript to create machine learning models that predict future events based on just past the data and categorize data as well as images. So with the popularity of frameworks like React that have a ton of jobs on almost any job board you go and see, frameworks like Node that also have a ton of jobs, GraphQL for querying and manipulating APIs, and even the new Deno.js, 
which is a new runtime environment for JavaScript and TypeScript, which was actually created by the creator of Node. JavaScript is here to stay. It's one of the top languages and one of the most popular languages in the world and arguably the most popular language. Um, as a huge community, like I said, and it's very worth more learning in 2022 and the average developer salary for someone that knows JavaScript or JavaScript developers, which usually is like some sort of MERN or uh, mean stack developer is $121,000 here in the US. Now coming in at number two is the Java programming language, which is one of the granddaddies of them all. And it was actually my first language. Java is a high level general purpose programming language that's class based, it's strongly typed, it's object oriented, and it's meant to have very few implementation dependencies as possible. It's intended for developers to be able to write once and run anywhere. And this just basically means that when it's compiled, Java can run on all platforms that support Java without the need to recompile. And according to Oracle, the company that maintains Java, it's run on more than 3 billion devices. And this is why it's so insanely popular. It has a good structure and it's modeled after a lot of C styled languages like C and C++. But you don't have to worry about management of the memory because it has an automatic garbage collector. It also supports threads, which basically just allow you to work on multiple programs at the same time and allow programs to run more efficiently by allowing it to do multiple things and run multiple processes at the same time. And Java is definitely up there and chilling with the big boys as it's used for so much um, just from including GUI applications, web servers, application servers, middleware applications, uh, web apps, mobile apps, embedded systems, and even enterprise applications. There's a lot, a lot, a lot that Java can do. And it's used by popular frameworks and just built off of by popular frameworks such as the Spring framework, which is probably by far the most popular Java framework out there. It's used by 90% of Java developers on a daily basis. We have Grails, we have Struts, we have Play, we have Hibernate, and a bunch more. Um, and there's so many Java on LinkedIn, Stack Overflow, and a bunch of other niche job boards. And it's an excellent choice to have as a language to learn as your first language or to add as a language to your tool belt. And I even have a lot of Java tutorials on this channel, as well as this 30 minute crash course here or here. I don't know which way it's going to go. Um, and the average Java sub, uh, developer salary here in the United States is $112,000. You already know what it is. You already know what's about to happen and you already know which language I'm going to mention as number one. And if you don't, it's none other than the granddaddy, the OG Python. Now this language has managed to slither its way to the top and stay there for years as one of the best languages to learn. Undisputably one of the best languages. It's, it's so versatile. It's a general purpose, high level programming language that is object oriented and has its emphasis on code readability. It reads like English. It's one of the easiest language anyone can ever learn. It's cross platform. It has an excellent developer community. It has a lot of cool features built into the language that allow you to develop applications quickly as well. And it also supports dynamic typing and binding. Now, because of its versatility, it's been used in almost every space for everything, including web development, artificial intelligence, machine learning, data analysis, uh, desktop applications, games, web scraping, automation and scripting, software testing and prototyping, you name it. Python is just one of the best languages to learn because it has so many applications and just can be used for so much and the average developer salary for Python developers here in the US is $115,000. That's it for this video. Now, if you find my videos helpful and insightful, um, go ahead and hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and hit that bell notification button. Like I mentioned earlier, it really does help me out. And to you watching this video, whenever and wherever you are, I really hope you have a nice day. I'm gonna go eat something. I think I'm gonna eat some pasta or just order something. But I hope this video was good and I hope you have a nice day.